Hey scrappy friends, it's Audrey. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. I have another page for Confessions of a Paper Addict. Today I'm actually using three cut files on one page. I didn't plan that when I started, but that's what happened. So I'm starting with this cut file called uh, Fourth of July, and I thought this background would make a fantastic stencil. So I'm gonna try to cut it as a stencil. Uh, so I'm just enlarging it to fit the 12 by 12 uh, background and kind of laying out uh, where I want here and then I'm also going to um, use these wonky stars as well um, because I'm doing a page about the 4th of July so uh, my third cut file I use which I didn't I, I kind of thought of after the thought um, was just the number four and it comes from the um, I think it's called the sketchy numbers cut file but I will post, post the link in my description so my photos which you saw there just for a brief moment um, are from the 4th of July and a little um, parade uh, kind of where we where we spend our summers it's a little parade with golf carts and bicycles and that they do for the 4th of July it's mostly for kids obviously um, and my, in the picture there's a lot of um, peach color along with the red white and blue so I wanted to go with kind of this peachy background but I definitely want to bring in some of those um, you know those patriotic colors the red white and blue so I am gonna I, I start with um, gessoing my background. I add a little bit of white acrylic paint to my gesso just to make it a little bit whiter because sometimes the gesso dries really clear. And then I'm going through. I use the packaging technique with a distress oxide. Um, I think it's called Peacock. It was very uh, vibrant at first, and I actually thought I had really messed up because I thought it was going to come out too dark. But it does lighten up when it dries, um, and I can take a little bit off with paper towels too. Uh, I'm going in with some peachy color here to kind of pick up on the peach in the background paper and a little bit of the peach in my photo. Um, you have to be careful though when you mix orange with blue or green because it does, it can become muddy and brown very quickly, which is kind of happening to me here. So I'm going to go back in just with, um, I'm going to spray a little bit more orange here in a minute and, and just add a little bit more, uh, um, you know, uh, specific spots of orange in there. And then I go in with some pink, and then I really wanted to bring in some red as well. So this red, I, I just pull out, I don't sort my mists really by brand or finish. I, I separate them mostly by color. And so I just pull out whatever color I'm looking for. So this is a red, a really old red um, glimmer mist. Uh, from Ranger. I think it's called Santa Claus actually. I know I, a lot of people get nervous putting red on a paper because it can look bloody um, but I think if you thin it out like I have here um, it still looks red especially when you put it against like a coral or a pink it looks a lot more red. So I love the way that this background is looking. I'm going to let that dry. So I've cut out the cut file here which you can see um, and this in itself is really just so pretty. I mean I love the way that firework is and the little stars all around. And I had the idea that I am going to try to heat emboss, which I haven't done in a very long time. So, um, well, that's not true. I did it a couple months ago for a page, but before that I hadn't done it in a very long time. Um, so I pressed through the stencil with my Versamark. I don't know why I didn't take the stencil off and then add my, my um, glitter embossing powder, which I should have done because a lot of the embossing powder ends up sticking to the stencil because it's covered with Versamark, so that was kind of dumb of me to do that, but oh well. And you can see there in my um, glitter container that my glitter is almost empty. So I was really pleased with, I, I was afraid that some of that glitter would get underneath or that the stamping wouldn't come out um, very crisp, but I was very pleased with how the stamping came out and how even the detail in the stars you can see with the embossing powder. So I'm just taking a really dry paintbrush here and I was kind of wiping off all the extra little glitter and then here's the magic when you add that uh, burst of the heat gun and that embossing powder starts to melt and you can actually see it there happening. I was trying to hold it at an angle where you could see the, um, the embossing powder melt and get that nice embossed, embossed glittery shiny finish. So I love, love, love how this came out. I, it came out better than I, than I thought it was going to come out, honestly. Um, I was actually really worried about it when I started that I might have to do a do-over, but it, it came out great. So you can see I cut the number four there and some wonky stars. Um, I left my embossing stuff out because I had considered covering the four, the number four, with gold as well. But it just seemed like too much gold, and I kind of liked the white contrast because I don't, really don't have any white in here. And of course, when you're going with a red, white, and blue theme, um, 
you know, you need to have a little bit of white. So um, I am gonna, I think I'm gonna leave that number four white. Um, I had played around in Silhouette Studio, which I didn't show you, but um, with the positioning of my photos, and I'm going to kind of do something like this. Um, I didn't write this in my story, but I, I should go back and add this to my journaling. But my son refused to have his picture taken this day. He was just being very grumpy. I don't remember why. He wasn't happy with the 4th of July outfit he had on. I can't remember exactly the reasoning, but so he didn't let me take his picture. So he doesn't have his own individual picture here, but I do have him... Um, a picture of him there in the golf cart. So he is present. I went through my stash and I, I have a whole bin of like things I use for my summer scrapping. Um, and I just, um, I was going through papers looking for specific colors and I wanted something that looked red, but wasn't like a super deep, bright red. So I found this piece of paper. It's from an old Dear Lizzie collection called Saturdays. Um, I auditioned it behind with my photos in the background and uh, I liked how that looked. The red and blue in my photo is very, very bright and very saturated. Um, so I didn't, I wanted to kind of let that stand on its own. And you can see how my photos are kind of peach too. Like I think my daughter's wearing a peach shirt underneath there and I'm just a little peachy. So the number four, I ended up cutting the stripes out from the inside because I felt that the stripes in the number four kind of competed with the firework um, and it was just a little too busy and I really wanted that firework to stand out in the background to stand out a little bit more. Uh, I picked one color blue but that wasn't working for me so I decided to go back and rethink that again and I found a piece of vellum with these red polka dots on it. This is also I think this is also from a Dear Lizzie collection. <clears throat> it might be an Amy Tan collection. American Crafts anyway. And I'm just going to back this number four with vellum. And I actually really love how this comes out. I, uh, you saw me put the number four on my sticky sheet. Um, it's a sheet of adhesive dots that works just like the dots in a tape runner. And um, it's really good for cut files. <clears throat> uh, it's made by Thermoweb or iCraft. You can find it on Amazon. And yeah, I love that four. Because you can still kind of see the background a little bit through it. But it still adds a little interest with the polka dots and it kind of blends in with the background still but you can you can still see it and it has the white border so bonus um okay these stars the white stars I'm just going to scatter them around I'm going to leave them white I thought about painting them blue I thought about doing them in gold as well but again I, I like the, the contrast the white adds I took some other thickers from my stash and just added the th for the fourth and then I'm going to pick some teal and um, kind of a reddish pink embellishments and stickers to just frame around my photos to add a place for a label um, for journaling and some uh, a date um, label at the top. I use that star in the center of the photos there because um, there is in one of the photos like a bicycle in front of my daughter riding her bike that was kind of sticking out from the photo and I kind of wanted to cover it up. So that's why I put the star in the center of my photos there. But I kind of like how that looks, um, the star there in the middle. I So I'm pausing the camera here often and I'm just going through my, my huge stash of summer stuff. Um, I go through some simple story stuff, some really old October afternoon. Um, what else? What other manufacturers? Uh, some more Amy, Amy Tan. Um, I'm sure others as well, but a lot of, a lot of old things. Again, just looking for kind of colors that fit the theme. And I am happy with that. Um, so I'm going to pop this number four off of the page, but I don't want it, the adhesive to show through the vellum. So I'm using these really, really, really skinny strips that, um, somebody recommended to me on one of my videos before when I was trying to back or do a shaker pocket or something. And, um, I looked them up on Amazon and they are great. Um, super skinny. They are perfect for borders of cut files like this, especially when you use them with the vellum, because then you don't see them underneath. Uh, I'm going to just go through and do the same with my photos, pop those up as well with some craft foam. And I don't, I don't really, um, you can see I don't cover the whole back of the photo with craft foam. I just 
cover enough of it to give it that boost and that lift off the back of the page. Uh, also, when you have photos that overlap like this, you can't cover the whole thing because the photo that ends up on top is going to have a lot more lift than the other than the one on the bottom, which you know sometimes you want an effect like that, but um, it also makes your page kind of bulky. So um, I just work around it by just kind of putting the the uh, the 3D foam where it will lift the photo, but not necessarily overlap other areas with lift, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> I don't know if I did a very good job explaining what I was trying to say, but and then I'm just going to pop off all these stars. And I don't really add too much more. Um, I thought about adding maybe some sequins or something, but for a little bit more sparkle. But I kind of just liked it like it was. I liked the embossing standing out and the gold. And, you know, I got three photos. I've got vellum. I've got embossing powder. I've got die cuts. I got mixed media. <laughs> There's already a lot going on. So I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to call it a page. I'm going to call it done. And I really love how it came out. I love the stencil, the firework. I will definitely use it again. Um, I was thinking about maybe reversing it and flipping it over. So there you can see, and I love how the little pieces of glitter that got left over there kind of add to the, more of the sparkle. And then you can see some of the other little bits I added. I try to get an angle here with the, the sheen from the embossing so you can see that. So that is it for the page. So three cut files on one page, the firework, the wonky stars, and the numbers cut file, which I will link below. And you can find those all in the Confessions of a Paper Addict store. So thank you so much for stopping by my channel today and stay scrappy, friends.